What is up? Felix Flair here for the Thoman Synthesizer channel and today we are talking about a subject which I've been wanting to tackle for a while already, which is modular synthesis. But because my own personal understanding of the subject is limited, I thought it would be a good idea to visit a friend of mine who actually knows what he's talking about. Uh, I'm talking about Ahmed Shishman, who is the founder of The Third Room, which I think is fair to say one of the most important electronic music events here in this area. Um, he's also been releasing music as a producer since 2008 and lately has built a very impressive hybrid production and mastering studio in which he has also assembled a super impressive modular synthesizer rack which we are going to have a look at which is why I'm going to hop onto the next train to Essen and pay him a visit. For having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah, we are here in your lovely little studio in Essen in Germany and we are going to talk about modular synths because as we can see you know much more about them than I do. So uh, why don't we uh, yeah, first speak a bit uh, about the basic concept of modular synthesis. What's different compared to regular synthesizers? Well the, the biggest difference is you can build up like um, a um, a normal synthesizers is built on oscillators, envelope generators, LFOs, filters, yeah. and ideally also effects. Mm -hmm. And LFO, of course, um, and the most interesting thing about modular is that you can build up those different sections the way you like. Yeah. Like, you know, you're not, you're not born to a, th a certain chain mm -hmm. of, um, of modules or, or build a, or a built-in system. Mm -hmm. Like when you buy a synthesizer, so it's basically the same thing, but it's already in a box and you can't change it anymore. Yes. If and this is like an open synthesizer that you can rewire yes. any way you want, essentially. Yes, it's an open synthesizer system where you can buy different modules and combine them with each other. There are actually no limitations. Yeah. You can do what you want. You can also connect stuff mm -hmm. to stuff which are really sometimes not supposed to be. Yeah. You get interesting results of it. And then maybe also um, the actual signal that's going through these cables is called CV. What's that all about? Yeah, it's called it's control voltage. Mm -hmm. CV stands for control voltage. Basically, what you are doing with all synthesizers, you are um, distributing, manipulating um, electricity. Yeah. And each unit has a kind of different voltage range. Mm -hmm. it it's some, most of them are bipolar, means like it goes to zero and to, to plus. Mm -hmm. And um, you can change and shape it the way you like it and get really interesting results, which are mostly with um, built-in systems are not possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the CV signal itself is actually very simple. It's just a matter of intensity, but then depending on which actual module the CV goes into this comparatively simple information does something very different and yes. then in the end you get a very complex synthesizer sound like the, 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 the basic of synthesis is always like uh, yeah. being the master of control voltage and right. knowing what you're doing I see basically that's the biggest thing you have to know what you do yeah. so for everyone who's into who wants to get into modular, I would really recommend, first of all, starting with semi-modular synthesizers mm -hmm. and really trying to understand what they're doing. Because no. starting, like for not the really advanced ones, starting with a modular can be, first of all, expensive, but also be frustrating to get mm -hmm. results you really want. Yeah. All right, then let's maybe... Um, aim to creating a little uh, jam with it but uh, and maybe also afterwards explain what we did but before maybe um, let's go very quickly through the individual sections of your particular rack starting in the bottom row here what's this yeah. all about i have basically four rows mm -hmm. um, and i build up the rows in a principle where my hands have to do the most work and this is basically the first two rows are the decisive roles for creating sound. Mm -hmm. The upper two rows are more for fine-tuning, fine-tuning, shaping the sound. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, we have two sequences here from IntelliGel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Metropolis. It's a really hand-on, hands-on sequencer. Yeah. Um, and you can sequencing crazy. I'm basically sequencing the second row of sound generators mm -hmm. with okay. the Metropolis. So here you create the notes, and here are the actual modules that yeah. create the sound that uh, yeah gets played. With yes. The All right. And then um, we have here also on the right side a filter. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's um, create a sound with uh, one of the um, yeah. step sequencers, and maybe just uh, walk through the individual. Yes, so we have from left to the right, we have um, different kind of sound generators. This is from, um, it's called Himalaya. It's, um, it's a six, all six in one um, sound generator. Mm -hmm. um, and I like mostly here the, the noise generator from it. Mm -hmm. Now this is the one you're hearing. Yeah. Without any effect at all. Yeah. You have this kind of filter you can change. No, this is kind of for crazy landscapes. Even if you would sequencing it, you can also do percussive sounds with it. Yeah, like hi hats and hi hats. Like I'm that. I'm mostly using it for 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 soundscapes. Mm -hmm. okay. Now to giving a background mood for the track. Yeah. Now when you're using here the filter, and also like the this is the rainmaker. It's a delay sound. Or? It's a delay delay comp reverb. This sounds a bit more if you're really using, for example, like a band pass. Mm -hmm. Could be also sound, sounds a bit like wind and rain, you know? Yeah. So this is kind of you have a background noise. Beautiful. This is the first one. All right. Then we have the Piston Honda. Mm -hmm. It's a wave shaper. It has two oscillators and basically you are shaping wave forms, like mm -hmm. sh means shaping the sound. Oh, just get me off the effect. This is without sequencing. This is just a just a basic basic wave. sound, you know. And then you have the wave shaper. Like it's like it sounds a bit like Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like of course you have to sequence these, but I'm basically not really sequencing it. I'm using it more for drone sounds. Yeah. You know, it's kind of with a different LFOs you yeah. can create from the Zadar or from the Kermit. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have the Odessa, mm -hmm. uh, which is a um, harmonic cluster oscillator. It says like it's basically you can add or remove partial harmonics mm -hmm. of a sound, like its core sound is a sinus wave, and you're just adding more and more. Yeah. You can add up to 512. <laughs> All right, can you listen to it? Harmonic sounds, and yeah, I'm just creating with it um, a melody and sequencing it with the Metropolis. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's like sounds like this. To be fair, it's of course um, has a sent return these two effects mm -hmm. from uh, make noise. So maybe let's try to um, trace this whole CV signal from the start to the beginning. What, where does the CV travel mm -hmm. until we get this sound, including the reverb, etc. We're yeah. starting here with a sequencer. It's, it's a sequencer. The sequencer is going out into the Zadar. Mm -hmm. Which is an envelope generator. It's an envelope generator. It's going out into channel C. Yeah. And we have basically so this here does an envelope. envelope. Decay, yes. Uh, it's, tech decay. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a waveform which you can change the waveforms, mm -hmm. as you see here. Yeah, it sounds kind of different every time you change it. Yeah. And this waveform is sending out the signal into my VCA. Mm -hmm. The VCA is basically a voltage control amplifier. It's amplifying the, the, the control voltage. Yeah. And then I'm giving here the order to manipulate that CV. Mm -hmm. And just when the sequence is played, it's giving out that signal. All right. So you get the melody. Yeah. And of course, here's the pitch. I'm pitching um, the Odessa with the Metropolis. Yeah. You know, when I'm changing it. Yeah, makes well, sense. You know, you can hear that. And then this, the VCA is going out into my filter. Mm -hmm. Closing it. Yeah. And this Opening is where you can again. shape the final yeah. sound. I just put off the effect. So yeah. when you're putting in the effect, it's like, it's a chain effect, reverb and delay. Mm -hmm. where the magic happens and then um, when you want this kind of evolving sound mm -hmm. um, 
I have I'm manipulating with the Kermit. Mm -hmm. I have put an LFO on the density. So the Kermit is also an envelope generator, yes. but also an LFO. It's an LFO. It's an envelope generator, and if you like, it's also a bus synthesizer. Uh -huh. It's like a three-in-one module, yeah. and also it has a sample and hold function. Um, it's a really diverse uh, module, yeah. and it, like these in combination are really powerful. Like this is this is these both ones are my main source for actually manipulating the sounds. You know, yeah. here's the creating part. Here's more the manipulating part. All right. Um, and yes, if you put up the density, you will hear how it's evolving yeah. with the pretty, yeah, medium fast LFO. Mm -hmm. And then you have this kind of evolving, changing sound. Yes, this is the Odessa. Um, and then. We have also two other modules here. It's the plats from Mutable Instruments. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically, it, it can do everything if you want. Starting from kick drum sounds till um, wave shaping, macro oscillating, mm -hmm. FM synthesis, anything you would like. And mm -hmm. maybe the biggest advantage of this module is it's really simple to use. It has just four button, uh, four knobs to, to like to, where you can change the sound, but it's kind of really effective. Yeah. And what it's doing, um, let me show it. Let me turn off the plonk. First, you just hear the, the plats. This is, okay, this is it's like... like a percussion. Yes, it's, it's uh, like a hi-hat, like a um, high metal hi-hat. Yeah. You hear, and then if you see, I just use the hi-hat function of it. And then you, when you are adding the plonk to it, I have built with the plonk. Let me turn off the plats. And the sequence is coming from the left metropolis. From the left right now, yeah. yes. Like I'm sequencing with the left metropolis these two units. Mm -hmm. And with the right one, I'm sequencing the Odessa. Yeah. All right. And then if you're adding and these this two now ones, is the plonk. The this is the low plonk. Tom kind low of bass tom, line yes. Sound. To give a bit more yeah. Yeah, rhythm and percussive elements. And if you add the Odessa to it, and adding the plats. But to be fair and to be um, put off the effects, yeah. it sounds kind of still good, but the real, Magic let's say, the opening the stereo image. Which is the uh, make noise. These What's two, the these two the effects are, are from make noise, right? Yeah. They, um, it's a reverb mm -hmm. and this is a, is a delay. Yeah. And the most maybe interesting thing about both ones are they are their 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 effect chain is going continuous mm -hmm. you know if you if you're changing the effects it's it's not like that uh, it's destroying the whole effect soundscape mm -hmm. it's just adding more to it yeah and these are yeah in my point of view this is a really maybe the best effect you can get alongside the rainmaker i tested yeah. a lot of different effects mm -hmm. But these were ones which were making really the sound huger and more, yeah. like even more musical. All right, and then um, how does this whole system interact with the computer? Where does it receive the clock or the tempo from Ableton here? Yeah, uh, we basically, um, like Ableton is the master. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, when you, I just play the play button on Ableton, everything is synced mm -hmm. and um, I'm syncing the modular system through the Pamela's workout. Uh -huh. It has this expander called yeah, MM MIDI. Okay. It's just receiving MIDI, a MIDI signal from my external MIDI um, device yeah. and then you're syncing Pamela's workout to it and then you can send out eight different outputs to all my modules. Uh -huh. Okay, like with for different example gates. the sequencers, etc. Right, the sequencer is basically getting its signals from the Pamela, but also when I want to sync my effects mm -hmm. in tempo, yeah. or even the LFOs, everything's coming from the Pamela. So this is maybe the most unsexy part, but maybe the most essential, useful part, just when you want yeah. to know how to clock sync everything. So then maybe let's uh, tweak all of this for a bit and maybe uh, return when we have a little jam that we 
uh, prepare and then afterwards go over the jam and go a bit into detail about uh, yeah, mm. the individual elements. Yeah. First, before we go into your side of the jam, we can yeah, conclude this here very quickly with the Electron um, analog rhythm. I basically just did uh, three sounds. The kick drum, obviously. This, uh, yeah, originally it was a rim shot, I think. I just have a lot of resonance in it and played with the filter a bit to give it this like sound design edge to it uh, on every 16th note. And then obviously the closed uh, 909 hi-hat. Where's the reverb coming from? Which reverb is it? Yeah, it's coming from the effect pedal, like from the Strymon Big Sky. Ah, okay. It's and, it's, coming. and it's also going um, through the equalizer, the percussion here and the... Yeah, uh, sure. Like the processing of the drum machine is going... Um, actually, everything is connected with the patch bay. It goes here into the mixer. Mm -hmm. And your drum sounds are going through the Neve equalizers. Mm -hmm. And before that, it's going through the electron analog heat All right. and both um, effect pedals. Yeah. This is actually not on, this is like from Strime and the a delay, right? This, this is, is a delay one, this is the big sky. All right, easy. So that concludes the rhythm section already. Let's That's get over section. to the uh, modular system. Well, the modular system, basically, we have run several um, sounds um, through these both um, sequences mm -hmm. and um, yeah, the one sequence is like um, controlling the Odessa mm -hmm. from Chaos devices. This, this is, is where like the main uh, yes. uh, the synth, melody. synth pattern uh, yeah, yeah. was coming from. The synth pattern you're hearing is coming from the Odessa. Yeah, can we hear it again? Yeah, sure. 
let's just play run. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is actually just um, when I put off the modulation, this yeah. is like the drum, this is the melody you're hearing. Mm -hmm. It's sequenced by the Metropolis. Yeah. Like, of course, it, it's playing a melody with different pitch notes. And um, it's getting an envelope from the Zadar. Mm -hmm. And then basically it's going to the Quad VCL from Intelligel, then into the mixer of, from Rosie, like it's from yeah. Make Noise. And I have, on a send return, um, a chained effect cha um, from both is also from Make Noise. It's a reverb and a delay. Mm -hmm. This is basically if, you, if I put on put off the effect, you hear it ah, okay. sounds quite a yeah. boring, you know. So this is where the magic happens. Actually, yeah. it's like two amazing effect units. Yeah. And then also um, the Kermit mm -hmm. is modeling. The also density. An envelope generator, but also an LFO. This is this is like a quad modulation um, unit. Quad means like you have four outputs, uh -huh. and you can do basically um, three major things with it. Um, you can put LFOs on it. Uh -huh. It's also an envelope envelope generator, and if you like, it's also a bus synthesizer. Yeah. yeah, I didn't use it yet as a bus synthesizer, but for like modulating CV channels, it's quite yeah. amazing. Like yeah. Zadar and Kermit, it's the perfect combination for me. Yeah. And if you put up here the density modulation of the Odessa, it's getting this kind of an this effect. This is where we got the variation from. Yes. Ah, I love it in this position. This is, yeah. this is a kind of, yeah, it's a density, you know, it's getting more, it's opening and closing the sound. Yeah. I think it's kind of a, yeah, it's a filter effect, uh -huh. basically. And then you can also use here also the filter from yeah. the Bionic Luster and you give, there's a lot of movement going on yeah. and kind of um, evolving melody stuff. And then the bass line, which the sub bass line, which we initially recorded already in Ableton. Yes. This one came from the... The Piston Honda, it's a okay. wave shaper, but actually we didn't really use it as a wave shaper because we used a really basic sound. It's mm -hmm. just um, it's just a sinus wave used as a bass drum. Yeah. Processed um, a bit of the effect. Yeah, and sequenced with the other Metropolis yes. here originally. Maybe let me play the bass sound so you can hear it. Yeah, that's the bass sound. Yeah. yeah and then this came from the Piston Honda, yes. sequence with this, and then it's going into the Zadar. Is the envelope yeah. generator for this one? Or what? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm basically using the Zadar mainly for generating envelopes. Mm -hmm. All right. Because you here have kind of a full control, but also you can do with the wave shapes really crazy stuff, and yeah. you can also modulate the envelope wave itself. Mm -hmm. this, brings kind of a dynamic in the sound. Yeah. So this is what's actually made Modular so interesting that you can chain the gear in any direction you want. There are no basically no rules yeah. and you can modulate everything to get this kind of ever evolving and moving stuff and um, this yeah. is what makes Modular so special. All right. So that covers all the sounds from None, the gym. Yes, but no, you have here also ah, the, actually, the, we also the second have the one. Yeah, plonk, we, have, right? we have the plonk and the plats. Yeah. Like we have going on. Let me maybe mute the, the melody. So the plonk is a drum percussion kind of. It's a drum percussion module. It's yeah. like it's actually modeling real acoustic sounds, mm -hmm. and you can um, yeah can shape them. It? Of course, okay. like and maybe mute let's the run it. Ah, okay. Let me mute the plats. So this is just a plonk. It's like yeah. really a basic, uh, more low tom. not really subby, but yeah, low yeah. low mid tom. Let's say it like this. So this gives kind of an eclectic. It creates an eclectic groove mm -hmm. alongside with the bass. Where right now it's receiving the pattern from the metropolis. From the from the, from the metropolis, oh, right. right? And I'm here modulating again through the Kermit a bit the decay. Mm -hmm. So it's changes. Yeah. Like an. Um, Let's check it. Yeah, it's a kind of, kind of a quick um, uh, LFO, like it's changed really quickly. So you have this kind of, again, as I've said, dynamic. Yeah. We put in again also the plats. I just put a hi-hat on that. This is actually a, a macro synthesizer. You can use a lot of sounds with mm -hmm. that. You can basically, if you're really up to it, you can just produce a whole track just with the plats, if yeah. you like. Of course, it makes maybe your life not that easy. Yeah, you have this, this is kind of, the plates. That's the plates, yeah. right. 
on top, you know, you have on top this kind of a hi hat. You know, you can also mm -hmm. timbre. You can. This is actually kind of a frequency shifting filter, I would say. Yeah. Now you know, and you just bring in the melody. 